the Chicago Bulls went into double overtime against the Denver Nuggets and won. <laughs> hey, it was a preseason game. But hey, on today's episode, we're going to talk about Kobe White. Did he separate himself from the other point guards? Talk a little bit about Ayo Dosumu. What is going on with Patrick Williams and his rebounding? And then things that the Bulls can build on. Y'all know I'm going to get right into it. But you know, you got to hear the music first. Cognac, yeah, yeah. Shy Bulls Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down for me and my co host C Dub. On another episode of Shot Bulls Podcast. If you like what you're listening to today, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. So every time we drop, you'll be one of the first ones to know. Now look, the Chicago Bulls, I couldn't believe that they wanted to go into a double overtime game during preseason. NBA, can we please fix this? No overtime games in preseason. There's no reason to go into extended play before we get into the real season. I understand. Maybe maybe in the first overtime, let's go ahead and let's just break it down and have a target score so it could be done and be over with. There's no reason, in my, in my opinion, to play double overtime. You know what I'm saying? You should just left it right where it was at. At the end of regulation, if you want to go ahead and have extended basketball, set a target score, and let's end it. Let's end it. Please, let's end it. There's no reason we should be up this late. <laughs> There's no reason we should be up that late to watch preseason basketball. Look, I love basketball, but we got to draw the line somewhere. I'm just saying. But that's just a quick little rant before we get into it all because I'm like, double overtime? Oh, no, we can't do it, y'all. <laughs> we can't do this. Can't do it. But anyway, I want to go ahead and talk about Kobe White. Kobe White, my guy, was named the starter again. Again. Him and Patrick Williams were named the starters again in the Bulls' second preseason game. Does this mean that Kobe White is the de facto starter? No, not yet. Not until the Bulls announce it. I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, he has the job. You know what I'm saying? But I will say I believe Kobe White is starting to separate himself among the other point guards within the point guard battle. Simply because I think that once you earn, because if y'all remember, the last daily episode, me and C-Dub, we came on and we were expecting each point guard to have their slotted time to where they were going to start. And we believe that, hey, in this game against the Denver Nuggets, we might see Javon Carter, Ayodo Sumu. And then in the next game against the Denver Nuggets, you know, coming up in our future, uh, you will see one of the guys that didn't start eventually make their appearance as a starter to see how they work with the starters. But no. Billy Donovan and his coaching staff felt that it was necessary to go ahead and start Kobe White for a second straight game. Now, Kobe White didn't start the second half. That was granted to Ayo Dosumu, and Ayo Dosumu took advantage of it. But I want to continue to talk about Kobe White before we get into that. Kobe White last night shot four for seven from the field, only shot one three-pointer, and then ended with four assists, eight points. Uh, he did have three turnovers, which is not good. You know what I'm saying? But if for my plus minus guys, he was still plus three in the box score. And he was still able, he was still out there, still creating things for himself and others. So that's something that I like that I like uh yesterday in last night's game against the Devin Nuggets. You seen Kobe White still look comfortable out there. And you know what I'm saying? It was kind of slow for him. I'll be honest to that. And um, he really didn't, you know, really make those impact plays until he had to come off the bench. And you seen like, hey, this lineup with him and Javon Carter being the two guards on the floor might be something the Bulls can run with. You know what I'm saying? But if you're looking at the performance from Kobe White, I still think that his impact on the floor and his ability to draw defenders out and space the floor a little bit more is something you still got to look at. He still looked comfortable. He was still running the pick and roll game. He was still finding uh, other guys and getting those guys open and letting those guys operate while still maintaining that integrity by keeping the space, the uh, floor space. So you got to look at that. 
Now, the question is, if uh, did Kobe White start to really, really separate himself? I would say just a little bit, not too much, because we don't want to get over our heads on this because we don't know how the Bulls coaching staff is thinking about things. So I will say, hey, he's starting to separate himself, but it's still not written in stone that Kobe White will be the de facto starter for the Chicago Bulls um, because a lot of us will look at the box score. But I believe the coach's job is to not only look at the box score, but also watch the film and look and look how this player, Kobe White, impacted the game to see how they can make things happen. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, I think that he's starting to separate himself. I do believe that Javon Carter is kind of treading around that reserve role as the backup point guard simply because we have not seen him in other situations with many of the starters. You've seen him play a little bit alongside Zach Levine with the second unit to where Zach Levine can add, you know, come in and add some scoring to what the second unit will look like. So maybe some staggering right there might be something in the Bulls' future. Who knows? We don't know yet. But as of right now, I think Kobe White is separating himself a little bit. I got Ayo Dosumu and Javon Carter battling it out a little bit. Because Ayo Dosumo early on didn't see much action. You know what I'm saying? He came in in the first half, played a few minutes, and then came out of the second half and started. So it was a little, you know, little things here and there that you got to look at. And you just take with it. You take it with a grain of salt, though, because we really don't know. And I'm not going to sit here and get over my head until it has been announced that said starter is going to start. But going into Ayo Dosumo a little bit more, I feel like he had a great start to his second half. The guy had came out there. He did his thing. The man had three offensive uh, rebounds within those first few minutes of him playing with the second unit, and it was a good, a great thing to see. He ended the night uh, with four rebounds in total, three offensive, one defensively, and those three offensive rebounds, those were just hard-nosed hustle and muscle plays, energy plays that the Bulls definitely, definitely will need if he – can some way somehow creep his way into that starter role. And even if he's not a starter, the energy he came out with in playing 18 minutes, going three for six from the field, one or three from the three-point line, you still be like, man, he still was solid defensively. He gave us other opportunities, and he took care of the basketball by not creating any turnovers. And for my plus-minus guys, I'm going to start including y'all a little bit more. He was plus nine in the box score and finished with seven points. So I got to give Ayodo Sumo a little bit of credit there. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, the edge for me right now goes towards Kobe White, but these other two guys are not making it easy for the Bulls coaching staff, which I absolutely love because you shouldn't be that easy, especially when it's a competition. You want to make this competition as hard as possible. You want to give each and every guy every opportunity to prove themselves as being, you know, worthy, for lack of a better word, to where they can earn their starting spot. And I think Ayodo Sumo, he put on a nice performance last night. It is preseason, so we can't overreact to it that much. But I did like what I seen from Ayodo Sumo in that regard, to hold himself down, to come in, make plays, no matter what. And, hey, it might not look the best when you look at the point total with seven points, but in 18 minutes, seven points, four rebounds, three assists, you get in plus nine from in the box score, you got to look at that. You got to take a look at that because the on-ball pressure – that he was coming out with, things that he did on offense, you know, we're kind of spreading the ball out a little bit more and even hit, even hitting a three-point shot himself. It was all great to watch. So I got to give him kudos there. So y'all let me know how y'all feeling about the point guard competition thus far. Do you feel like Ayodo Sumo is now separating him? Not Ayodo Sumo, excuse me. Do you now feel that Kobe White is now separating himself from Javon Carter or Ayodo Sumo? Or do you still feel like it's, you know, it's a tight race? I feel like there's a little bit of separation, but things are still tight. So you let me know how you feel down below. <laughs> now, we move on to Patrick Williams, man. We move on to Patrick Williams. And what I want to talk about about Patrick Williams is his rebounding. Look, I understand that Billy Donovan offense, the one that they're trying to create as a team now, calls for Patrick Williams to be more outside to where he's spacing the floor. That's what I believe that the Bulls are really, really harp harping on is spacing the floor and trying to get up more three-point shots. Did this game, the Chicago Bulls, they shot 38 threes. 38 threes for 36% as a team. So not mad at the percentage, not mad at the attempt total. 
You know what I'm saying? You definitely want to continue to modernize the offense and you definitely want to have things flow within the offense. And uh, that's what it is. But the problem is, is that in this game, P. Will only had three rebounds. In game one, P. Will only had two rebounds. So my thing is, is Patrick Williams. Yes, I love what Patrick Williams has been doing offensively. He's been going with the flow of the offense, going plus minus guys again. Doesn't really matter here in this conversation, but my guy was plus eight while he was on the floor. So you got to give it a little bit to him. But he was one of four from the field and 0 for 1 from the three. So in total, what, four shots, five shots? They got You got to be better than that. You know what I'm saying? But he did let the other guys eat a little bit more in this game. He ate a little bit more in the previous game than Nikola Vucevic. In this game, Nick Vooch ate a little bit more. And then you got Zach Levine taking 15 shots and then DeMar DeRozan taking 11 shots. So it's on with eight with 19 minutes of play. It's only so much that he can do. So I'm not gonna sit here and castigate the man to the point of no return because it doesn't make sense. Look, with extended minutes, we should see more out of Patrick Williams. Plus, we got to go ahead and continue to push him, push him towards toward that cliff of jumping off the porch. You know what I'm saying? Let's jump off the porch, Patrick Williams. Even if you can't be effective offensively, let's ensure that we are impacting the game in other ways that can be with assisting that can be with the rebounding that can be defensively you can do other things you know with throughout the game that helps the team win and puts them in a better position to where they can succeed you know what i'm saying because to be honest with you it's kind of disappointing that he only had two points on the night that's just me it's kind of disappointing you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna go too crazy on it it is preseason gotta take it with a grain of salt but i want to see patrick williams start to you know, build some consistency, you know, within that lineup. You know what I'm saying? And we all know that DeMar DeRozan, Vooch, and Zach Levine will be the three main guys scoring. But if you want to see more of an offensive, you know, uh, push from Patrick Williams, he only took four shots, y'all. Only took four shots from the field and one three-point shot. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to continue to push him to being aggressive. We know how big this season is for Patrick Williams. And we all need to get on one, you know, one accord. and. When it comes to the point total, I'd be like, all right, cool. Because the preseason bull still trying to work it out, only played 19 minutes. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? But in garbage time, you got guys like Julian Phillips, who got you eight points. Andre Drummond in 14 minutes, got you six points. So I'm just saying, Pete Will, you couldn't give me four to six points, bro. You couldn't give me more than that. That's all I'm asking for. Just give me a little bit more. Or... If you're not able to give us the point total that that, that 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 you know is that I desire, let's impact the game in other ways. Let's get five, six, seven rebounds, not three. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that's not good enough. And I'm not trying to pick on them. I'm just going ahead and stating what that what's going on with the rebound. Uh, Patrick Williams is supposed to be playing a four. I know there's gonna be conversation that said he belongs at the three. I'm not disputing that, but right now he's playing at the four. You got to have the impact of rebounding a little bit more with the center. The center, he going to eat. He going to eat all of He going to gobble up all the rebounds. You know what I'm saying? Nick Vooch, my man's on the night, had four rebounds. So should I really be picking on Patrick Williams? Nah, maybe not so much. You know what I'm saying? Because Vooch only in 22 minutes, only had four rebounds. Patrick Williams only played 19 minutes, had three rebounds. I guess it's cool. So we'll just back off from that. But for me, you know, that's just something I want to see a little bit more. Y'all think I'm being too pushy? Y'all kind of agree with it that P. Will needs to affect the game with, you know, um, a little bit more with rebounding if his points are not, or the shots are not falling for him? Or do y'all think I'm doing too much? Y'all let me know in the comments. I might be doing too much. It's just that two rebounds last game, three rebounds this game, something got to start the level off here, especially with the aggression. You know what I'm saying? Because you're seeing in the second half, Ayodo Sumu, he was able to get his three offensive rebounds in a span of a few minutes by simply hard hustle, muscle, and some energy. So let's get that hard hustle, muscle, and some energy from Patrick Williams. That's just all I'm going to leave it at right there. So let's see if we can correct that. But now I want to go ahead and end this thing off by talking about the things the Chicago Bulls can build on. So the Chicago Bulls, it was great to see that they went into double overtime for some people, not me, but they did win the game. So I guess it wasn't all too bad to, you know, get some extra basketball. 
You know what I'm saying? So some of the things that I believe that the Chicago Bulls can continue to build on is correcting their defensive rotations. Too many easy baskets. And I know that a lot of people are going to say, well, it's Joker and Jamal Murray. That pick and roll is damn near unguardable. Facts. But we, as, as unguardable as it is, that doesn't mean that people should be out of position. Communication is key. Communication is key. We got to communicate. And you don't, you might not stop it. But is there a body there to try to stop it? You know what I'm saying? Is there a body there tr trying to stop it? You know what I'm saying? So that's something that I think that the Bulls need to get better on. You know what I'm saying? Defensive communication, definitely with the rotations as well. Communication, rotations, and all that stuff comes with energy and effort. It is preseason, so I'm not going to sit here and harp on it too bad. But we know that preseason, you know, you want to start to build those, build those habits early so you can take those into the regular season and then you be good to go so i want the bulls to start building out this mentality hey we're gonna communicate on defense we're gonna play some hard nose defense you're probably not gonna play it too much hard nose in the playoffs i mean in the preseason but you still want to at least have guys in position you know what i'm saying so that's one thing the next thing turnovers you know what i'm saying i want the bulls they did in the game with not a horrible turnover rate, but they had 22 turnovers, man. We got to get that down. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And some of that probably would have been on, you know what I'm saying, some of the reserves that came in, you know, to get their time and things or whatnot. But even when the starters was out there, it was a bit, you know what I'm saying, a bit little loose with the basketball. You know what I'm saying? We seen some plays. We got turnovers from Patrick Williams, one, three from DeMar, three from Vooch, three from Kobe White, three for Zach Levine. We gotta get we gotta keep those down because even if I'm even if we looking at some of the younger guys, most of those guys only had one turnover. Our starters, every starter except Patrick Williams had three turnovers. We have to take care of the basketball, and I understand that we still working out some kinks trying to you know uh, attack the basket a little bit more and things like that with the driving kicks, and that's kind of what's come trying to become the philosophy of the new the new Bulls offense. But at the same time. You got to take care of the basketball, bro. You have to. Because right there, between your starters, that's 13 turnovers, bro. These No no starter play over 24 minutes. No starter play over 24 minutes. And that's 13 turnovers from the starters. You know what I'm saying? So we got we to gotta tighten that up. That's all I'm going to say. We got to build off that, tighten that up. Make sure we good to go. Now, one positive that I could think we definitely need to continue to build on is attacking the paint. Attack the paint because uh, Kobe White, he can get into the paint. Seems like he's working on it to where he can get to that level when he can just get to it just whenever he wants to. You know what I'm saying? Still not going to grant him that yet. But with the foot speed, with the increased uh, in, with the increased and improved handling, he can get there in the paint and then do a driving kick. You got DeMar DeRozan, who's a mid-range assassin. He can operate within there and make things happen as well. We know Patrick Williams, probably not to the level of a Zach Levine or DeMar, but he can get there. And then you got Zach Levine, who pretty much his first eight points was in the paint. So you got to continue to build off that. And I believe that if you build off that, you can start continue. You can continue to open up shots for others because you seen Alex Caruso go four for six from the three-point line. Hey, that's pretty damn good. That's pretty damn good. Javon Carter, two from three from the point from the three-point line. That's pretty damn good. That's the type of stuff that you need. And then we just need to make sure that our starters are on the same accord and that if they are going to take the shots, they are within the floor of the offense and they are good shots. So let's continue to build off those things. Let's make sure defensive communication is solid. Let's make sure that we continue to attack the paint. And let's, let's make sure that we are rebounding at a rate that'll make us, you know, respectable around the league and, and that will give us more chances against the opposing team. So that's it for me today. Y'all let me know how y'all feeling about all this. Excuse me. How y'all feeling about all this down below? And we're going to chop it up all day. This is another episode of Shy Boys Podcast. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And hit the notification bell. So every time we drop, you be one of the first ones to know. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one for sure. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. Gang. Yeah.